Hey everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pulse Studios here. And today we're going to be talking about the Celestian impulse responses for the new Pulse 12 and 15 speakers. You may know that aside from audio production, my main thing is I am a bass man. So I'm very much looking forward to diving into some bass tones with impulse responses today. So, this is the Celestian Pulse 15 that I decided to start with, with one of the presets. Now, this is a very wide and varied set of impulse responses, uh, because each one that you buy does come as a set, as far as I believe. Uh, so, I have the Pulse 15 here, which is a 1x15 cabinet, which is fairly common, and there are four different microphone, five different microphones in fact, although let's go through them. There's the AKG D112, which is also known as the egg mic, I have one of those lying around, if I just pull that up, it's uh, got quite a round sound to it, the D112, although it does have quite an aggressive upper mid-range, which can be really quite useful depending on what you're doing. And also, what do we have? We have the Neumann FET 47. I'm selecting the balanced one here just to give you an overall. So the FET 47 by Neumann has a more pronounced mid-range, uh, less of that kind of classic bass scoop, so it's more natural. I'm playing my jazz bass right now, by the way, finger style with all my EQ on the bass at zero, so kind of... Yeah, in the middle, nothing fancy going on. And what other mic do we have? Uh, we've got the Sennheiser 421, which can really be used to bring out quite an aggressive punch on bass. And we've also got a Neumann TLM 107, which is the room mic. which if you're blending impulse responses can give you a bit more realism on the bass. And we've got a KM84, but that's only on the horn of this speaker, which is where all the treble can come from. This is gonna sound horrible. Yeah, so that, that doesn't sound particularly nice, but that's something that is usually meant to be a small percentage blended in when you've got a cabinet that sounds great, but you want an extended top end. So a lot of cabinets have a tweeter horn that you can just add a little bit of, which is something that I do quite often on really aggressive uh, bass tones. So I'll not spend forever going through these, but I'll just turn off the cabinet model firstly and just show you what's going on. So without anything, my bass sounds like this. So what I tend to do to get a nice fat sound rather than just a DI bass sound is I use the Amplitube Ampeg SVT Classic, but only the head, not the cabinet, because I, I personally find that the cabinets in Amplitube don't work so well. Uh, you could use any sort of bass preamp, either plug-in or real preamp, like I've got two notes of the bass, which I use live. Uh, you can use quite a few different pedals like that, like the Ampeg uh, Scrambler pedal, or, you know, th there's loads of options out there, but they don't tend to come with a convincing cabinet and speaker sound for me. So that's where this comes in, because this... Let's just turn the master output up a little, just to get it back. If you're listen to, listening to this on headphones, you'll notice that the ultra-low and the ultra high on this amp mean that suddenly there's some real super sub stuff going on and some clickiness in the high end, which if I say let's do some slap. It doesn't sit very well, it sounds cool, 
but that's not going to gel in a mix because there's some super low stuff going on and super high stuff, but it's still very in your face. The transients are almost too present. The low end doesn't gel, and that's because the speaker is the second half of that equation. So I decided to start with the Pulse 15. Um, a lot of people, if I turn this cabinet back on, a lot of people wrongly assume, I think, that uh, a 15-inch speaker gives you more bass. Um, that's not necessarily true. It can be if the cabinet's designed that way, but not just because the speaker's a 15-inch. You see, as a speaker gets bigger, its ability to push air actually gets worse because it's having to bend and buckle and flex and move a lot of speaker cone around. But what that does mean is that because, as a trade-off, the top end is lessened and you get less transient response, the speaker can kind of sound soft, it can sound warm, it can sound fat and naturally slightly compressed, which can really lend itself to a lot of great bass tones uh, without having to do much extra processing. Great example is the old Ampeg B15 uh, combo, the Portaflex. One of the best things about that combo was the, the relatively low wattage of the tube output on the amp and the uh, softness of the speaker meant that it was very forgiving. So if I turn on this uh, speaker with the finger basic, suddenly... If I play quite aggressively or quite softly, it sounds relatively even, the transients aren't becoming nasty, and that can sit very well in a mix instantly. Uh, and it's interesting that they've given us all these microphone choices, which are great if you're looking for something very specific. But at the same time, say if I go FET 47 FAT, I could probably compress that, EQ that, and get that to sit in a mix exactly how I want. But then I'm a professional audio engineer. This is what I do. Uh, you can also you know, choose a couple of microphones, blend them together, or Celestian give you these. And these right here are what I think are absolutely brilliant for someone who wants a ready-to-go tone. And that actually includes me, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, I've got impulse response loading hardware, like I've got the two notes uh, cab pedals, and what I might do in the future is have a few of these loaded ready to go, so that if I'm playing a show, I can just go, okay, 15 inch speaker, finger style, go, and that's going to be the right blend of these uh, microphones in the right places on the cabinet, that I don't have to worry about anything, I can just feed that to front of house, and go, you're not going to need to do much with this, have fun. Which also means that if I'm working in a venue where the sound engineer isn't great, uh, then I can just feed that to them, tell them, don't touch the EQ on the desk, that should work. That's going to save me a lot of hassle. Sometimes you get a sound engineer who's amazing, but sometimes you, you don't, that's just the way of life. And having a better sound to provide to a sound guy, they're always going to like you more. So, uh, let's say we go from the finger ones to all plus room in mono, so... So, live, I'm probably not going to want to use the impulses that have room sound on them, because the room sound is naturally going to happen from the room that I'm playing in. However, uh, if I'm doing a studio thing, I probably do want a bit of a room sound on a bass. Uh, most of the time on slower songs, uh, to give it a bit of a, a fullness that just hel helps it gel in a mix. Because sending a bass to a separate reverb can cause all, all kinds of issues. But just having some room sound blended in on the impulse so that we know that Celestian have done that for us saves a lot of hassle and especially on the bigger sounding ballady tracks that's going to work beautifully that's going to give me that kind of that nice bigness uh, so there's a plectrum basic which if i just play fingerstyle with that 
I can already hear that the mids are much more forward. So if I grab a plectrum and then suddenly start hitting this. That for me really sits quite nicely. If I change to the plectrum aggressive and I really dig in, I'm guessing that they'll have moved those microphones in a bit. But yeah, as I'm getting more aggressive, it's not getting overly nasty. Now as we switch to the 12-inch, that will probably be quite nice. So, the 15P slap. That's going to be, yeah, traditional slap style. So this is going to sound like something from the 70s as I go uh So, let's just go from this plectrum aggressive and now we'll switch to the uh, Pulse 12, which is a 1x12 cabinet. Uh, same sample rate I'm using, 500 milliseconds because I can and then go straight from, I've not clicked it yet, so this is still the 15 inch plectrum aggressive. Now let's go to the 12 inch plectrum aggressive. Do you notice how that suddenly became quite mid focused, quite a lot more punchy and in your face? I tend to like smaller speakers on bass most of the time because I find it makes me sit in the mix a little further forward. A 10 inch speakers quite often can be a bit too tinny, a bit too aggressive, depending on the sound we're going for. But if I now go to uh, finger basic, that should, if I just go back to using my fingers again. I can definitely hear that the mids are much more immediate. And that's partly because the 12 inch rather than the 15 inch speaker, like I was saying, it's not got that softness and that buckle in the speaker. It's not to do with the super low end, it's to do with the mids. Uh, because the speaker's not buckling as much, which means that it can be more in your face without necessarily being like a DI signal. Now, let's go from here. We'll do a bit of a, a quick slap with the 12-inch speaker, and I'll try not to hit so hard that I clip these uh, pole pieces again. And look at what happens when we start adding in where it says plus 84, because the 84 is the horn. Now it's definitely got some brightness that wasn't there before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the bass down and what we're going to do is we're going to have a listen to the song that I've been working on which is a demo for the Rev G4. Now this is quite metal but this because there's quite a lot of harmonic content will hopefully give you a clear idea of what you can do with this. So let's just turn this volume down. Okay, so this track has quite a bit of compression going on after this impulse response, just so you know ahead of time. If I turn off the G4 channel, the clean channel sounds like this. If I blend in the G4 pedal. So I'm going to turn the G4 down a bit because we don't need quite so much of it.
Okay, so from here, we're on the Pulse 112, and we're going to just explore some of these sounds. So we're on the D112 Balanced, which is quite often what I would do with a real uh, bass cabinet, is I would have a D112 or something like that on the cab, probably slightly off-center from the cone. And you'll just see me now flick through from balanced to bright, dark, fat. Okay, now this bass sound will sound quite punchy and overly aggressive, but it's a, a metal track that it's got to mix into, and if we don't give it that extra boomph, it's not going to cut through, and we really do want it to cut through. So, if I was to swap out the D112 for the 421... Suddenly that kind of low-mid bloom has gone. That, that kind of wum wum, which in some tracks you want, especially in kind of classic rock, whereas with uh, this kind of thing, I find that the 421 is quite a lot more even. If I swap that out for the FET 47, It's interesting how now that uh, upper mid is suddenly a bit more outspoken, which surprises me. I would have thought the 421 would be doing that, but hey, there you go. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to add the finger basic instead. Almost too much. Let's go for the plectrum basic, because it was played with a plectrum. And then the plectrum aggressive. So that's really quite up in your face and we've not had to change any EQ settings. Let's see how that sounds in the mix. Okay, so uh, let's just back off the mids on an EQ a little bit. Now that sounds really quite gritty to me, um, which is great. Uh, it does sound with that kind of upper mid honk a little bit vintage, which I'm not complaining about. So uh, let's make it more modern. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to solo this again, is I'm going to turn on cabinet two at this point, make sure the blend is completely off just to start with. And I'm going to use exactly the same speaker with the same setup, but I'm going to bring in this horn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend it in ever so slightly and I'm going to slide this blend slider and you'll see it change. And it's interesting for me how instantly that upper mid where it's quite grindy has suddenly become more airy and a bit less uh, kind of in your face uh, upper mid aggressive which extends the frequency range of the bass out, especially with that distortion, and changes the entire feel. So this should sound more, quote-unquote, modern in the mix now. Now that's got way too much high end, so let's just back some off on the EQ again. Now can add a bit more of that horn in. So 
if I take away the G4 again, this clean is probably now one of the nicest, smoothest, roundest, and also extended top end cleans I've heard. <laughs> And that's just the two notes uh, la bass on clean with the uh, Celestian responses in front of it. The thing about bass impulse responses for me is, do you need them? Well, you don't need a lot of stuff, but if you're searching for tone and you want realism and you want to also cut through with minimal effort, then this is exactly the kind of thing that I would be looking for, and I'm probably going to be loading some of these up into my uh, live rig so that I can just hit uh, the two notes la bass that I use, load some of these into my uh, two notes uh, cab M so that I can then choose between my own cabinets through uh, what I have with two notes, as you will have seen. Uh, and in certain circumstances where I don't have the time, especially to be really finely tweaking, if I can then just go to a preset that is one of these, finger warm, plectrum basic, or whatever it would be, then I can just go click, 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 done, and move on. And for me, the time saving with the real sound means that there's very little compromise there. And that is a great recommendation for me. If that's what you're looking for, is something that you can get a simple result now. Hope you found this interesting and informative as always. Um, look forward to more stuff coming on the channel. We've got a review of the Two Notes Torpedo Cab M, which will be compatible with these impulse responses. Uh, we're also going to be doing a lot more stuff comparing different microphones, even things like different graphics cards in uh, music production PCs to see if that actually makes a difference. So there's loads to go at that's going to be coming out very soon. Thanks for watching everybody. I'm Adam Steele and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.